Hello and welcome to episode 39 of the Knitting Pickle Podcast. 39, my goodness, it's oh, nearly the big 4 0. Um, my name's Laura Penrose, I'm a knitwear designer and content creator. And I'm here with a traditional format podcast for you today. Hello and welcome. It is Wednesday afternoon. It's calm, it's quiet. I've been looking forward to filming this all week because I've got loads and loads to catch you up on. It is a typical late autumn day today in that it is extremely bright and sunny. Uh, my house is self-facing, I would normally be in my bedroom but the light is just like constantly in and out of the clouds, really really bright so I'm at the back of my house today. So I apologise for the rather boring background <laughs> but it was either that or really bad light <laughs> so i went for the boring background with the nice even light so we've got a lot to catch up on today my goodness first of all thank you to everyone who joined me for the autumn vlogs earlier on this month um i had such a good time i know that vlogs aren't everyone's cup of tea but i I really, really enjoyed this set of vlogs. I did a week of daily vlogging, all based around autumn, my kind of day-to-day -day life, um, lots of knitting. I worked on this during the autumn vlogs. I finished this during the autumn vlogs. Um, and it was just such a fun time. I really had a lovely time. And I just wanted to say another thank you to everyone who joined me for that. And if you haven't watched them yet, I highly recommend, obviously, and I have some admin to go through first, really, before we get on to the projects, because since I last podcast, there's been quite a few updates. I need to empty my memory card. Apologies, just have to clear my memory card from all the August vlog footage. <laughs> so, yes, quite a lot has gone on in that time. Um, first of all, I have released and updated a pattern. I released my pumpkin spice hot water bottle cover. I've got, oh, this is the original design here. So you've got your pumpkin and your coffee and your lovely little bits. And it comes in a mini version as well. And in that pattern night, there is also a design your own autumnal themed water bottle cover. I haven't got my sample with me because I gave it to my mum, um, but I'll pop a picture in. Um, it was a little bit late in the season now, but you might still enjoy making that pattern. And also within that pattern, it's pattern. Within that pattern, there's a whole design your own hot water bottle basically it shows you it gives you like an empty chart and guidance on how to put together your own kind of motifs and yeah just a little bit of fun so that's been released and thank you to everyone who supported that pattern so far it was such a fun one to do it was kind of on a bit of a whim and they're always some of my favorite patterns to do because they're usually just you know fueled by pure joy and focus <laughs> and I've also updated the Maxine hot water bottle cover with the mini size I've got a little few samples for you here I mean technically finished objects as well I don't know if I showed this I think I've done this one um can can you uh, see what what's going on here <laughs> uh, yes I've updated the Maxine hot water bottle cover I haven't got the big one with me um it was released last year and it just had the two litre size. It now has the 500 milliliter size, which is the mini. I get mine from No Frills Knitting, who are currently closed because they're moving, but they'll be reopening again super soon, online and in store. Um, little 500 mil hot water bottle covers. You've got the five color version and the three color version. And yeah, this is a, they're so good for like a quick knit. I can make one of these pretty much in a day if it's all I'm doing that day or over a weekend at the very least. So they're awesome for gifting and using leftovers slash being in totally extra and having a hot water bottle that matches your jumper. <laughs> and the other little piece of admin that we have, I can't believe I'm about to say this. I'm so excited. The Midland cardigan is officially in testing. If you've been following me for a while, you know the Midland cardigan is a design that I came up with over a year ago it came to me in a dream <laughs> 
okay, not fully in a dream. It came to me when I was trying to fall asleep and I couldn't fall asleep and obviously my mind decided to do the thing where it has this amazing idea and can't stop thinking about it and keeps me awake for half the night. Um, so yeah, it came to me in about February and I made my sample, wrote the pattern and freaked myself out entirely and got scared of it and put it aside. Well, I finally found um, the courage to do it and I sent it to uh, edit during the October the autumn vlogs and then it's now in test so I can't oh I can't quite believe it's happening it the test is going really 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 well um we've got we found like a few just like um like things to clarify no major issues no uh maths issues or anything like that which is such a relief and so far it's been such a pleasurable test knit and I'm really grateful to everyone who applied for that because there are a lot of people who applied and I'm sorry I can't choose everyone um, but I'm just blown away. If you are a size 10 which is the largest size of the pattern unfortunately the tester I had for size 10 can no longer take part so if you would like to test that size then please do pop me an email I should probably let you know what size that is shouldn't I that would be helpful that is a chest circumference of 79.75 inches or 202.5 centimeters with a recommended positive ease at the bust of 10 to 12 inches the midland cardigan is quite different I suggest you take it from the because it's like not square it's like this shape I suggest you take it from the lower waist measurement which is so bet basically between your natural waist and your hips that kind of in between point and for the size 10 that is so that's 73.75 inches or 187 centimeters with a positive ease recommendation of six inches or 15 centimeters so if that fits within you or someone that you might know that you might want to knit it for then please do get in touch with me pop me an email or a message and that would be fantastic so there's one more teensy bit of admin but it comes with something lovely that i get to show you and that is a little update on my uh uh, make along which is the to me from me make along this is running from the beginning of September to the end of November so we're over halfway through now and the idea is that you find time in those three months to make something for yourself whether that's a jumper or a pair of gloves or you might want to sew yourself something or crochet it's a make along it's not not strictly knitting just anything that you kind of want to make for yourself to encourage you to take time for yourself in this really busy time of year where I know a lot of people feel pressured to gift knit and things like that I'm just trying to encourage everyone to do a little something for themselves and there are three different prize draws for the make along there are two on Instagram and one on my Patreon so on my Patreon there's a finished object draw on Instagram there's a finished object draw and on Instagram there is just a whip draw so if you use the relevant hashtag and post what you're working on you could be in for a prize. I shared the prizes for the finished objects in the last episode but I hadn't yet got the prize for the uh, whip and that was because I was waiting for a very specific update and I'm so excited to show you what the prizes are. <laughs> so if you are the lucky winner of the, the hashtag prize, so it doesn't have to be a finished object, you've just you know taken part in the mail, you've shared it on Instagram and used the right hashtag, then you will be up for winning, oh my goodness, these two beautiful skeins of yarn from one of my absolute favorite yarn dyers, Woolly Mammoth Fiber Company. This is Woolly Mammoth and Emma has been doing these absolutely gorgeous eco printed yarns she's got a couple of vlogs all about this where she shows you how she does it it's dyed you get like the whole flower and you put it on the yarn and it's this whole process and it's just incredible to watch and the yarn it creates is so unbelievably stunning look at it this is her natural dk which is a limited edition base it is 200 meters for 100 grams 50 percent chivia 50 percent bfl all locally sourced, spun and produced in the UK. This is Raspberry Crumble. 
Look at those purples and yellows. And this is Firecracker, which again has got the purples and yellows, but is slightly more pink. And I thought these could go beautifully together in a project, you know, like a mini shawl or like a, I don't know, a mini shawl would probably be great. Or you could use it in like hats, gloves set type thing, or you could use them separately, whatever you wanted to. But I thought they went together really, really nicely. And I also got myself one couldn't resist this is apple crunch and it's like pinks and greens and i am planning to make myself a pair of mittens with these like full full hand mittens woolly cozy beautiful yay and i'm so excited i bought these with my own money it's not sponsored or anything like that i just really really wanted to be able to share this stunning yarn with you because emma has been so generous with me for yarn support for the Maxine and so encouraging and just so lovely. I just I just needed to, you know, give a little something back and share her work with you guys because it's fantastic. So that's all the admin. Shall we crack on with the day? <laughs> so first of all, a sip of tea. I'm drinking a cinnamon chamomile. Very on point. Um, let's start with what I'm wearing, of course, and officially my first finished object of the podcast. Should we tilt you down a little bit? This is my Maxine sweater, version two. <laughs> Obviously I showed you the hot water bottle patterns earlier. Um, this is the sweater version. The hot water bottles came first and when I first made them, I had so many messages saying sweater, sweater, sweater. And I was like, you're right, I absolutely have to. Um, this is my second sample. I've got my first down here just to show you briefly. I have gone in depth with that sample before if you would like to know more about it. But this one is the three color version. It is made with Woolly Mammoth Fibres Hearth Sock held single with a strand of Isiga Mohair. And that is because I had a couple of gauge issues. <laughs> and that's the lovely brownie, ready brown. The colorway is copper for the Woolly Mammoth. The Isiga is just a number, I think. And then the white is the natural sock held double in its undyed color. And the gray is the hearth sock held double in its natural color. And yes, this is the three color version. And then my original is the five color version. And this is all natural sock held double. So you can see it really gives quite a different vibe, doesn't it? Like it's giving autumn, winter. <laughs> and this is the most like beautiful, warm, oh, the, the aim was autumnal, but compared to this, I'm now seeing it more as like transitional. It gives me, like it could be autumn, winter or spring with the lovely yellow and the purple and yeah, just stunning. This one obviously has a turtleneck and this has the folded neck. I wanted to show the different options. This one is quite a bit longer and has a split hem and this version is more cropped and has just a regular hem. This one also has super long sleeves and these ones are a little bit more of a practical length. So... The reason I, the first reason I needed a second sample is because I didn't quite get the right fit first time round. And that is because, first of all, I chose the wrong size. And secondly, I hadn't quite got my short rows correct. It needed a little bit more just to help the fit around the neck. Um, and I'm so, so unbelievably relieved to see that that all worked. My test knitters are doing an incredible job. There are already quite a few finished. I've still got a few people waiting on yarn, I think, but, oh no, that's the Midland test. I'm doing two test knits at once. Who is she? How have I managed to get to this point in my life? <laughs> but yes, um, the samples done by my test knitters have been absolutely gorgeous. There are so many super fun colour combinations. We have learned a lot about colour balance throughout the test, so I've got some things to add to the, to the pattern about choosing colours, finding the right balance and all that kind of thing. Like for example, in the five colour, these are two different colours, but the balance is like as 
one and in the original three color I had the white and gray here and then it was reversed down here to be gray and white but I, that to me was giving unbalanced it was almost like this was dark and this was light and as a whole it just didn't really work in these super high contrast if you're doing something with a more even color palette like this the different colors work but when it's this high contrast I decided to do the same color here and here so again there will be um, information about that in the pattern. But as you can see, the fit on this one is absolutely perfection. We've got no humping. <laughs> it sits on me beautifully. Like I could put my arms up and down the yoke just, oh, it's not restricting. It, oh, I just love it. I have worn it so many times already. If you had joined me for the autumn vlogs, I'm delighted to tell you that I went on scoring the other day and got a compliment on my jumper. <laughs> so there you go, this is the Maxine sweater. This is due to be released in the middle of November. So it's super soon, really, 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 really soon. Bit scared, but super soon. This is my first garment release in a year. The last time I released a garment was the um, sibling sweater my size back in, yeah, September. Or was it October? September? I don't know, it was last year. Um, October. Yeah, um, so it's been a year since I've released a garment, which is terrifying, but I'm really, really excited. And me and Emma have been extremely clever and have synced it up so that the pattern is released at the same time as her big festive end of the year update. There will be kits for the Maxine and loads of lovely like yarn for you to use. I must say, I apologize, I should have said this at the beginning, that this yarn is sponsored. It was gifted to me by Emma to make this design. She hasn't paid me to use it. She hasn't paid me to talk about it. She's just gifted me the yarn to use for this design. And honestly, it's been such a wonderful partnership. I got, I had a bit of a thing with this because the natural DK and the half, uh, the natural sock and the hearth sock are quite different in weight. The yard, the hearth sock is quite a bit thicker than the natural sock. So for the original sample where I'm holding the natural sock double, the gauge is perfect. When I then tried to hold the hearth sock double, I could not get gauge. The yarn was just too thick. And I was like, oh no, I'm gutted. She sent me this beautiful yarn and I can't use it. What am I gonna do, what am I gonna do? And I was like, well, hang on a minute. If we hold it with some mohair, we might be able to get gauge. And when I messaged her, she was so supportive, like she basically made me feel really relaxed about the whole thing and said that holding it with another yarn that isn't her own was absolutely fine. And she's actually cast on her own in these exact colors now. So we're gonna have matching jumpers. And I'm so excited for this. If I ever get to meet Emma IRL, then I can't even imagine like the photos of us in our magazines together. I love that so much. So yes, the yarn was sent to me as was the original sample. Thank you, Emma, so much. So that's what I'm wearing today. My Maxine sweater, I'm just obsessed with it and I'm just gonna wear it as much as humanly possible. The yarn is woolly and rustic, but it doesn't bother me at all. Like I can wear it next to skin. It's warm, it's light. Oh, it's light. It's just beautiful. I can't even get over how gorgeous this fabric is. I was really worried that the mohair would detract from the beauty of this yarn. You can see that it's kind of like, it's warm and cool, which is just insane. There are warm moments and cooler moments. And I did not alternate skeins at any point. I'm just gonna show you the body because you can see, like, I think I changed skeins like around here somewhere. And I used a different skein on the arm and on the body and you just cannot tell. You cannot see it didn't alternate skeins or anything like that and it just shows how good Emma is at what she does so thank you shall we move on <laughs> so I have another seven finished objects but they're all the same thing <laughs> and then I have two whips as well but they're quite exciting one you've already seen and the other is brand new baby and then we're going to go through and do my instagram saves which i absolutely love doing now i'm so glad that i started that section of the podcast so would you like to see what i've been hyper focusing on for the last week if i'm gonna feel like i'm gonna say this loads of times if you joined me for the october for the october 
if you join me for the autumn vlogs, you will have seen <laughs> that I have been working on mittens. Lots and lots and lots and lots of mittens. And I ain't joking. <laughs> so many mittens. <laughs> I am my... The care home that my grandma is in is having a charity craft sale and my mum is having a stall. She has been sewing loads and loads of stuff to sell and I think her friend is as well and she asked if I could contribute anything and I was originally going to do hot water bottle covers but I'm so hot water bottle covered out that I couldn't bring myself to do it. I might still once I've gotten over the glove thing <laughs> um, but and it's not until the end of November anyway so I've got loads of time. But I decided I would do gloves because these little DK weight fingerless mittens are so unbelievably fast to make and they're great at using up leftover yarn that I just thought I'm going to be able to produce a lot of individual items in the time it would take me. Like I can get two to three pairs of gloves in the time it would take me to do a hot water bottle cover. So it just made more sense. And it's also stuff that I can like... I can work on mittens whilst I'm walking to and from the school run or when I'm in the car or just, I just need some simple, easy evening knitting. And I'm glad I made that decision because I've obviously been very productive. Uh, the first pair I made, I made during the October vlogs. And that's this sweet little pair of rainbow speckle fingerless mittens. And because I want to sell them, even though it's for charity, I needed to make sure that I could legally do that so I had to write my own pattern to make these which is what I did. <laughs> this is a strand of uh, Arvetta and a strand of Surrey Alpaca which is the rainbow sparkle, sparkle, speckle. It's the colourway Popsicle from Cheshire Hand Dye, Cheshire Yarns. Um, this skein was sent to me as a thank you. I purchased a load of it to make a sweater for Penny and then shared that on Instagram and I needed to order some more and she sent me a spare skein to say thank you so not paid not sponsored but gifted nonetheless so I have to let you know it's so lovely I'll never get bored of it I love it and this isn't the first time you're going to see this yarn in this podcast so yeah just a really simple pair of mittens and I worked them top down and this is the point of this of this kind of whole thing that I'm gonna go into now. I wanted to make a top-down version so that I could use every scrap of yarn possible. So if you're normally working a pair of fingerless mittens, whichever pattern you're following, you'd start at the cuff, work your way up, increase for the uh, thumb gusset, and then separate your thumb off, do the hand, and then do the thumb. But when you do that, you're in the risk of running out of yarn at your hand or your thumb. We don't want that because we need that to be as, as big as we want it to be. This can be any length you want, really. This is quite a long arm. I quite enjoy a long arm. But I also have kind of noticed when I wear a long arm, sometimes they kind of ride, ride up a bit like that, unless I've got something really like trapping that in. So... I thought if I reverse engineer this and go top down, I can make this as as long as I want to, which is what I did. And this is my first kind of draft of it. I kind of, mm, it wasn't the best. It's absolutely fine. It's a wearable pair of mittens. However, I could do with a few extra stitches on the thumb. And I also worked it. So I, I worked the hand and then I cast on the stitches for the thumb and then I decreased and then worked the arm and then picked up the stitches to finish the top bit of the thumb and that gave me a seam inside the thumb which is totally fine it's the least fiddly way to do this but you do get that seam on the inside and it's fine but you can kind of feel it it would be better if I had more stitches on the thumb so it wasn't so tight but you can kind of see it here it's like a little, it's like a little hump around here where that seam is. Again, better if I have more stitches. Um, but you know, it's just <sighs> if I can make something perfect, I have to do it. Like this is like fine, but if I can make it better, I will. So next time round, what did I do next? I think it's purple ones next. Aren't these gorge? Again, this is a hand-dyed sock yarn. I believe it is. Signs of Spring by 
creative anarchy, I think, and held with also a hand-dyed mohair, which I think was, no, Surrey alpaca, because it's really, really thick, um, which I think was the leftovers from a really old project love note that I did. I haven't got it near me, but um, these ones are really soft and squishy and fluffy. And this time, these ones, did I work them bottom up? I think I did work these ones bottom up in the end, actually. Um, yeah, these ones were bottom up. And then, we, ah, these ones, which ones did I do? Yeah, these ones, my first top down pair. So this is the next pair. Again, we have a hand dyed uh, yarn. I can't remember what this is or where it came from. I'm pretty sure I got it at the Southern Wool Show, not Southern Wool Show, the Summer Wool Show held with a strand of mohair. This is just one strand of fingering and one strand of mohair. And it creates like a, a much lighter, it creates quite a light thin fabric because they're DK weight. So they're a little bit more like relaxed, a little bit more slouchy and a bit more like light. And this time round, I cast on the thumb first. I made the thumb here and then I put that on hold and then I did the hand and then I joined it all in the round and I had like some stitches here and some stitches here on hold, which I then like sewed together. Then I worked the decrease, then I worked the arm. And even though it was definitely fiddlier than the other way, it means we have no seam here. And I just think it's, it's just, it's just nicer love this pair and then we have again hand dyed sock yarn this time I went with two strands of mohair still the same needles the same like stitch counts and everything but it just gives a thicker cozier glove and I think a slight different in size I think because it's thicker yarn you do get a slightly larger glove but only slightly maybe like a centimeter larger um, and yeah, I love this one. I've got a pair of socks in this. You know, like when you do a pair of socks from a hand dyed yarn and you have like 40 grams left and you're like, what do you do with it? You make mittens. And then <laughs> the next challenge I wanted was, can I make a pair of gloves out of a 20 gram mini? That was the next challenge. And I thought, well, if we're doing them top down, then surely we can. And the answer is yes, you can. Ta -da! <laughs> this is a uh, mini from Vicky Brown Designs, I believe, and it's this kind of pinky, greeny, and I held it with one strand of vanilla, like a vanilla-y coloured mohair. I love using, I think it's by Drops, actually. I bought loads of it ages ago. Um, I love a vanilla mohair rather than a white because it just kind of goes with more things, and you can kind of see the strands of mohair, like, here and there occasionally, but that's fine. And it's just less abrasive than white and helps kind of like soften the hand dyed yarns without overtaking it. So again, worked top down and you can see, let me put a full length one on, that you get a shorter wrist cuff, but only by, you know, like an inch really, not that different at all. And I find this, this, uh, length is really quite practical as well, especially for working from home. I wear these a lot when I am sat on the sofa and I'm sample knitting or I am typing something up or I'm writing or grading and my body is nice and toasty warm from a hot water bottle in my blanket but my hands get a little bit cold. I don't want to put the heating on when it's just me. My living room is quite a large like space volume wise because it's got a vaulted ceiling. Um, so to heat all that air is like a lot just for me sitting on the sofa. So these have become so handy, so practical. Um, and yeah, I used a mini skein and that's it. Obviously I use the mohair as well, but if you've got a mini skein and a little scrap bit of mohair, I think I used 10 grams of mohair for this pair of little glovey wovies. And yeah, I'm so pleased that I was able to make it work. Obviously, this is just a kind of average hand size. I've got a pretty average size. If you had a larger hand and you were to make a larger mitt, you would end up with a shorter cuff. I also think I might add a little bit more length to the hand here because I could lose a couple of rows from the from the, uh, the wrist quite happily, but I think it would make quite a difference to the hand, just having a little bit more up there just to kind of bring it up to more like there rather than there but you know 
They take me three to four hours to make, so that's a tweak that's easily done. And then I finally got one more pair. And then made a red pair. This is a full length pair. I did these bottom up with a really, really long arm because I had quite a lot of this yarn left over. Again, a hand dyed sock yarn with a mohair and it's this beautiful berry Christmas red. I love these. I think I've got enough yarn to make another pair of these or at the very least like a, a mini pair. So there you go. That is my absolute fingerless mitten marathon. It's the only marathon I'm doing this year. <laughs> I'm so pleased. I can't, I can't believe it. And now I'm looking at them. I'm like, I want to make on another one. I've got some boucle yarn that I'm going to use. And yeah, it's just great for like using up random yarns, like so like different weights, anything from like sport weight to um, worsted weight really. Now I know what you're saying. And I've had lots of people ask me this question on Instagram are you going to write the pattern for it, Laura? The answer is kinda. And that's all I'm gonna say for now. <laughs> I have got a plan for this, but it's not gonna be as simple as writing a pattern and like releasing it. And I'm also aware that it's a plain stockinette fingerless glove, which isn't exactly, you know, progressive <laughs> when it comes to knitting patterns, but as my friend likes to remind me, not every pattern has to reinvent the wheel. The thing that is unique about my version of this type of pattern is that it's specifically designed to use like a 20 gram mini skein using scrap yarns, top down. I think when I do create the pattern, I will include top down and bottom up and as much information as I can about how to get the most out of your yarn. And I think there may also be a video. So we will, see i've got a couple of things i need to kind of sign off before i can get to that but i am really excited about this so yeah i will be sharing this as a pattern very soon and as soon as i have kind of confirmed that and got that in the works i will let you guys know it shouldn't take too long but before that i have another design another project that i need to finish off first but we're super close to getting to the end of that so if you can't wait and you're desperate to make yourself a pair of fingerless, fingerless mittens, I can highly recommend the Penny Gloves by Petite Knit. They are slightly different to this. They have uh, pearl row details. The increases are in a different place. It's a different gauge, different stitch count. But if you like the look of these and want a similar vibe, then like Penny Gloves are excellent. I've made loads of pairs myself. And yeah, there you go. So moving on. I've got two more whips to show you. One you've already seen, the other you have not, unless you joined me for the autumn vlogs. We'll start with the one you have seen, Ooh, because I've, oh no, oh, bum cheeks. I've lost some stitches. Why did I do, I've obviously pinched the needles off this. I need more like four millimeter needles, man. I just, I'm just, const they're constantly in use. So, this is, what point was this when I last showed it to you? Let's just have a little look. Watching myself is awkward. Oh, okay, I'd just done the yoke. Oh, I hadn't even done the ruffle. Oh, exciting. So, this is my main to me from me Mal project. I have wanted to make myself a long sleeve souffle for literally years from the moment I released the pattern like two and a half years ago three years whatever it is I wanted a long sleeve version and I just never allowed myself time to do that and I also wanted a red version so this is my main project the idea is it's going to be my like Christmas jumper this year I've got some silver sequined trousers that I bought last year that I love and I think it would look fantastic with this for that kind of glam yet comfortable Christmas day look and I've made quite a lot of progress on it since I last showed you so here she is so far <laughs> I'm not gonna put it on because it's on like pre very precariously on a cord and as is the sleeve and I don't want to have to take my jumper off and ruin my hair and everything so yes yeah, so here we are here she is I have added the ruffle 
and a little bit of body and I'm nearly at the end of the first sleeve. This had to go on hold when I started this one because I had to get this sample done first. Um, but I'm like, oh, I'm really excited to get back to this and really focus on this in November, I think because I, I would really like to have it to wear in December. I am using, did I bring it with me? Nope, uh, Rowan Alpaca Soft, potentially. If that's wrong, soz, I'll put everything in the description box below. Um, but it's this lovely kind of warm red color. It's not as bright as I initially thought it would be, but I absolutely love it. I think it really, suits me it's a little bit more subtle and a little bit more wearable and i'm really really enjoying it the original souffle is uh two strands of mohair held together for the body and the sleeves and one strand on the yoke so it's like slightly sheer and it has got an eye cord edge and a, a keyhole back this is different it's more of a crew neck version it's got short rows it's got a folded collar fold like a stockinette folded collar and it is my intention to eventually update the original souffle pattern with this kind of crew neck modification because I just find it the original souffle I love it but I it's not that casual for me I don't find myself reaching to wear it day to day whereas this kind of more jumpery version it's just a, yeah it's a little bit more wearable I wear my summer souffle all the time it's the summer cotton fitted version of the souffle. Obviously the original souffle is super poofy, floaty, fluffy, um, but I kind of wanted something in the middle of that. There's also the chunky souffle, which is like a super chunky version, but again, quite heavyweight, you can't really wear it under a coat. So I just wanted, again, something more kind of wearable. I think this is the souffle I would have designed if I was designing it now. The souffle was my first official garment release and I've been really pleasantly surprised looking back at the pattern, like I did a really good job <laughs> and it makes me very, very glad that I found my editor when I tackled that and I'm still using the same editor now. But I think like if I was to be going back, if I had this idea now, it would probably be more like this, I think. So yeah, it's nice to see the progression of me as a designer and to go back into that place and yeah. Add a little, little something, a little different option. I've got a feeling I'm going to run out of yarn because I can only find two of the balls and I don't think that's enough to finish this. Um, I think I'm massively underestimated. It was really hard to tell because the original pattern is two strands held on the body and one strand on the top. It was a bit tricky to figure out how much I'd need for one strand held throughout, but yeah, it's not difficult to get hold of. So that is my souffle. That's where we're at with that. And then finally, we've got my latest design, which I'm really, really excited about. I've got one sample finished, one failed sample, and a sample that I'm working on. So I'm gonna grab it, it's behind the camera, bear with. I started working on this in the autumn vlogs. <laughs> And I kept it a little bit secret for a while because I was a bit scared of myself, but I can confidently share it now. I've shared it on Instagram and everything and I'm just absolutely loving the progress of this. And it's an interesting one to talk about because it was a big fat fail to start with and it's always good to share the things that don't work out. So I am delighted to introduce to you the <laughs> Midland Neck slash dicky who knows <laughs> so this is a it, it's a neck it's a dicky it's a bib whatever you want to call it it's just just the neck bit <laughs> and i've always always wanted to design a neck i've it's been on my list of things to design for a long time i equally want to own one i don't own one my daughter has one that i bought for her years ago that she loves wearing and still wears and they're so much more convenient for it than a scarf especially for a kid, because they don't have to wrap it round, it doesn't fall off, they just put it on and it keeps them toasty. And the whole point is that it's like a pretend jumper, like under your coat. This is the child size, by the way, it's not just this teeny. <laughs> I started with the adult size and realized that I'd made a load of errors in it, it needed to be completely regraded and readjusted. 
but I did I couldn't bring myself to rip back the entire adult one and start again so I just rewrote the pattern and did the kids version which was great because I was able to write the actual copy alongside me knitting it but it didn't take ages and now I'm redoing my adult sample I can go through and rework my own pattern make adjustments find errors before it then goes off to edit which should speed that process up to if I had sent it off as it was before I started to re-knit it, we would have had issues. So I like doing things that way. So as you can see, just like the Midland cardigan, it is a sideways garter construction. So you start at the edge and you work your way across. And this guy has an eye cord. Let me move my face. This is tricky. It's quite blown out, my friend. Let me put my hand here. There we go. It's got an eye cord edging that runs all the way around and it's totally integrated. So there's no knitting it and then having to pick up a million stitches and then working an applied eye cord bind off. We don't want that. It's all worked in there. It's got the uh, faux uh, seam of the original Midland. And the main difference I think is that it's crew neck, not V-neck. The original is obviously, it's a V-neck cardigan. And it was really fun to look at it from like a crew neck point of view. It was tricky. It was difficult to get my head around at first because it's work, worked sideways. Anything width wise is done with row gauge rather than stitch gauge. So it's a bit of a mind. And then obviously it's a turtleneck as well. Oh, I love it so much. I'm so, so pleased with this. This is the same uh, yarn combination as the mittens I showed you a minute ago. It's the Popsicle Surrey Alpaca and a strand of Arvetta and it is so soft and drapey and just absolutely gorgeous. Perfect next to skin. My daughter refuses to wear it. Unfortunately, she goes, no mummy, it's itchy. Even though she has a jumper in this exact combination which she wears all the time. <laughs> five-year-olds, eh? But I'm also not mad because it will keep this absolutely pristine and perfect. And I'll just look at it forever and give it to someone else, maybe, I don't know. But that's the kiddie version. Here is my adult version, which is in an awkward place at, at the minute. It's hard to show you, but you kind of get a clue of how the construction works here. Um, like, there we go. <laughs> I'm currently halfway through the front bit, but yeah. There you go. And this is, again, Phil Kalana Arvetta in, it's either ballet slipper or ballet ballerina, something like that. And Surrey Alpaca, again, just to get this lovely pink fluffy. I've got, I've got it. I've bought it with me, didn't I? Didn't I? Did I? Am I going mad? I'm sure I bought that with me. What the heck? Oh, it's on my lap. <laughs> this is the fluff that I'm using. It's the Fibre Company Ciro and I originally bought this exact yarn combination to make my daughter a ballet cardigan because she studies ballet. She just never got around to it and I lost the joy for that idea and I thought this is just absolutely perfect. I think thinking about the pattern itself and visually these just go together so nicely I can imagine them like a lovely flat lay with this one and this one and they just speak to each other they just look perfect together and it's just so soft it's so lovely next to skin for something that's up and around your neck and all up here you just some it's soft and fluffy it's just wonderful and I have got a v-neck wool camel coat and I love brown and pink as a combination so I think it's just going to look so good with my favorite coat so yay now my original sample I've still got I've kept it on the needles so that I can show it to you though it will ultimately get ripped out because I want to use the yarn for something else and I can show you like the, the issues still I mean I should probably take the actual needles out maybe I don't know but here we go here's my original grown-ups version and can you see the issue is it obvious to you it's obvious to me <laughs> my back is longer than my front and also my kind of shoulder shaping here it's not dramatic enough the idea being that it's obviously wider on the shoulder and it comes across here because you don't want a load of fabric here at your underarm if you're wearing a coat over the top that's going to be really awkward so this angle just wasn't dramatic enough and now you can see on the kids one that it's much more obvious this kind of angle here and I think on the adult one my new version as well it's 
hard to tell at this point, but yes, it's just more dramatic. I just needed to, you know, regrade my short row, like rates here, but I'm much happier with it now. So that was the main issue that this, this shoulder cap just wasn't really working. And then what I also found was obviously the difference in front and back. And I was so confused by this at first because in the Midland cardigan, that's not a problem. And I'm like, why am I getting this? And the reason is in the Midland cardigan, I there is shoulder shaping that raises the back neck so that the cardigan sits nicely around here and doesn't fall off the shoulders. It was really important to me. If I'm gonna make a cardigan, it, it needs to be correct in that area because there's nothing more frustrating than a cardigan that slips off your shoulders. So I raised the back neck with increases and I applied the exact same thing to this thinking it would be absolutely fine. And then I tried it on and the back was like, an inch or two longer than the front. And I couldn't get my head around it. And then I finally realized the difference is in the middle and cardigan, this point here is anchored at the underarm. And because that is a fixed point there, it forces the extra fabric to go up, just like when you do short rows after a yoke color work yoke just like here rather than at the top this has no short rows at the top they're all at the back at the bottom before you split for sleeves and it's so important that those short rows are before you split for sleeves because otherwise that extra fabric you put in is going to go downwards not upwards and that's exactly what happened here without that anchor point here all the extra shape all the extra fabric that i put in to raise the back neck just goes down rather than up so I had to go back in and basically what what I added to the back here needed to then be added to the front in length. So I just had to make a really minor adjustment, but it made such a big difference. <laughs> I was I was really quite disappointed because obviously I'd gotten very, very far with this. And I don't know why I didn't try it on and check it before I started to add the neck, but I did nonetheless. If you look at pictures of the original Midland, you will see that the faux seam runs right along the collarbone here. And you can see on it that the, the faux seam kind of sits just to the front. So you can see it from the front and the extra shoulder shaping comes up here. With this one, when it's on and finished, the shoulder seam sits along the back, like when you have a drop shoulder sweater or something. Um, so it has a slightly different vibe in that way, but obviously because this is under a coat, I didn't really mind if it was at the front or the back. I really like on Midland that it's towards the front because you actually get to see it when you're wearing it and you get to enjoy that beautiful little detail. So this yarn, by the way, is the Woolly Mammoth Fibers Half DK, which is the same yarn that the original uh, Midland is made out of which is why I chose this my thinking was you know you if you're gonna if you have any left over you could potentially use it for this you need about 200 grams so you probably would need more you'd need to buy extra if you had the intention of making the Midland neck to go under your Midland cardigan effectively turning your v-neck cardigan into a turtleneck jumper how amazing is that? I really hope someone does that. Um, but in the end, I decided to change the yarns because I having to rip this all out and rein it in, in the same yarn was really holding me back from casting on that new one and keeping the design moving forward. I needed a different yarn, I needed a different motivation. And it was also gonna leave me with like one random leftover skein. And I, I want this yarn to be something beautiful and really wearable. I potentially like to make um, originally I got this to make a Midland cardigan for my daughter, like a kid's version. I don't know if that's going to happen or not. Maybe, maybe not. We will see. I might be a bit Midlanded out after this. Um, but I wanted to make sure that this gets retained. And I'm glad I made that decision because I, th I think it's better for the pattern all overall and I can use this for something else absolutely lovely. But I mean, I just have to show you how gorgeous this yarn is. Again, it does the whole... Um, warm and cool at the same time thing it's got moments where it's really quite pink and moments where it's more mauve and just yeah that that warm and cool it's just gorgeous i love it so that's what happened with the original sample lessons were learned <laughs> but i mean i was also thinking the other day this like totally sets me up for a midland sweater right like a crew neck version who knows, I'm not gonna make any promises. But yay, there 
there we go. That's all my projects. How long have we been going for? We're nearly at an hour. That's just about perfect, isn't it? Another sip of my tea. Mm. By the way, with the Midland neck, there is going to be a child size, a youth size, and then three adult sizes. And it's all based on shoulder span and chest depth. So, so like the main issue with that one that went wrong was at first I was like, well, does this really matter? But the front ended like right, right in the middle of my boobs. <laughs> so when I put something on over the top of it, I just had this line right across the middle of my boobs. So the length wise, it needs to be past the kind of apex of the chest so that when you're wearing a coat that that edge sits underneath rather than right in the midpoint so yes that's the difference in sizes and it should be totally unisex because the bigger size is quite broad so even for like a big bulky fella it should be just about right which is really exciting and i've done a child and a youth because size wise this is going to last a kid for ages the one that penny has the commercial one that i bought from a shop is age uh i think it's age two to ten or something like that which is mad but she wore it when she's two she's five years old now she still wears it my son's got one he's seven he still wears it and it still fits so yeah that's why we go child and then youth and then if you have like a, you know, if you're like a teenager, you could maybe do the smallest adult size or the youth size. It kind of depends on your frame. So all within one pattern, sizes for everyone. Yay! So shall we move on to my new favourite segment is what is in my Instagram saves? <laughs> so this, I've just realised actually, this has all been my own designs for this episode. Um, so yeah, we should probably give you some inspiration from some other people, shouldn't we? I really love this section. Oh, don't forget to screen record. Here are the things that I have saved on Instagram in the past few weeks that have really captured me, that have got me really excited. How many are we going to do? I'm gonna do, I've got one, two, three, four, five. Five, I'm gonna think, I think five is enough. So first up, we have this gorgeous, sweater it's called the emma sweater by russ knitwear simone is a wonderful person fantastic designer and i'm just obsessed with this latest sample of her latest design i absolutely love it and it's available it's live it's good to go i think it would make such a beautiful christmas sweater it's got color work on the bottom of the sleeves and the body and that's it it's got a contrast folded uh, neckline with a little pop of colour on the hems and cuffs and it's just lovely I think it's so so nice I'm just gonna check the sizing because that's super important there it is Emma sweater and she's included oh wow that's amazing she's included pictures of it with no colour work at all and ones with colour work and I love how simple the, and effective the colour work is I just love designs like that uh, so let's see, it goes up to a finished garment circumference of 73.75 uh, inches or 187 centimetres. Fantastic. And that's to fit up to a size 30, uh, 63 inch chest. But that's quite, that's 10 inches of positive ease. You know, not everyone wants that much ease. So you could de definitely go even past 34 uh, 34 63 inches so excellent sizing on that one. Oh, it's lovely oh it's making me feel so festive next up we have oh what's this one ellis knitwear this is like a collared broken rib blouse situation it's called the groningen pullover oh and it's made in newton i just saw it and it just really it just really captured me. I really like this style of garment. I love a collar. I think the, the, the collar shaping looks really nice. It looks really interesting. Like I think there's some increases in there. It's not just like a, the same width all the way around. It's actually got a bit of a curve to it. And I love a bit of broken rib. Is it actually broken rib or is it brioche? Oh, or is it? Oh, I'm not entirely sure what that is. That's exciting. Right, so let's go and, oh, I've got more than one from this designer in my saves. <laughs> I 
Um, I've got that other one as well. So let's go and have a little look on Ravelry. What we've got going on here. Where is it? There it is. A Groningen, Groningen pullover. Sizes, it goes up to the 67 inches with two to six inches of positive ease. So brilliant. And the smallest is 35 inches. So yeah, great size inclusivity there. And my second, my next save is from the same designer. I saw this reel and oh, it just got me. It's really made me want to steak something, but also just this color work. Oh my goodness. It's simple, it's graphic, but so effective. It's one of those when I saw it and I thought, damn, I wish I'd thought of that. I absolutely love it. It's work. I think this is fingering weight, but oh my goodness, it just looks so, so good. Oh man, I love it. Oh, the cutting of the steak. So exciting. I really want to steak something, my goodness. Maybe there'll be a Maxine cardigan one day with a steak. I just, oh, it, I'm, I think I'm more scared of writing a steaked pattern than I am of actual steaking itself. But yeah, it looks fantastic. And I think this is a design that she's working on. I blooming hope so, yeah, pattern in the making. So there you go. There are two designs from, let's just see again, Ellis Knitwear. Love it. She's got loads of lovely colour work. Whoa, very, very nice. Love that. Next up, we have a sock pattern. I shared something similar to this. Um, I think they're called the cozy, cozy Blanket Socks or something like that, and it's just got it around the cuff. But these are from Stone Knits. I absolutely love Stone Knits. The colour work socks are just incredible. This is, again, that quilt star vibe that's super popular at the moment, and these ones are... Um, I think she's done a pair where, like, yeah, she's alternated the colours. There it is. So one sock is one way and the other sock is the other way, which is just such fun. I think I am going to give colour work socks another go this year. Not for me. I don't like wearing them personally, like sensory wise. They kind of get me, but I would love to make a pair as a gift, a very specific pair. And I think I'm going to do a stone knits pattern because, yeah, they're just so fun. So I'm looking forward to that adventure. And then we have finally another colour work sweater. Clearly, I'm just loving the colour work at the moment. I'm a little bit colour worked out in my own knitting practice, but I just cannot get enough of seeing them at the moment. And this one just absolutely, oh my goodness, blew me away. It's amazing. And there's one specific detail about this that I just thought was absolutely fantastic. First of all, the colours used in this are just gorgeous. Pink and burgundy and red and yellow, and they look so good. The colour work itself, amazing. I've got a little bit of one by one in there, strong graphic, bold. The short row shaping on the yoke is so good. It's all done, from what I can see, in the one by one colour work, which is just so unbelievably clever. I would never have thought of that. And what I also love about this is I, I read the, uh, um, dim, 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 I read like the, the caption. I think I did a little bit of, I, w I looked at a few of these posts and what you can see is she did the original neck and it was far too wide. But instead of ripping back the whole thing, she went in, picked up the stitches, worked more short rows and added like almost like a double collar and I think it looks so good. Like, talk about happy accident. It's, it's fantastic, so clever, and looks completely intentional. And I think it's just amazing. I would love to knit this for myself when it's out. I, I really do feel like I've got um, like full colour work jumper in my future at some point. And I think I would really, really enjoy this. Mokosh, Mokosh pullover, I think it's called. Looks like it's in testing at the moment, which is very, very exciting. Yeah, it looks like it's in testing. So that's really exciting. Oh, right, I'm just gonna go in and see see where we're at with that, see her latest post 
on that one. What has she got to say about it? Yeah, it's in testing at the moment. Oh, it's so cool. Oh, and she's done the sleeves. She hasn't done um, the colour work all the way down the sleeve. It's like a single colour sleeve. Oh, I'm not sure how I feel about that. I think if I was making it, I'd do the colour work all the way down the sleeve. Hmm, I think that's just me and my weird feelings of things being unfinished. <laughs> but amazing. I love that neckline. I think it's fantastic. So, that's it. We're done. Just as I'm getting the battery signal on my camera. <laughs> so, quickly before we run out of battery, though we probably will, what have we got coming up from me soon? You can expect me to be a little bit quieter on YouTube in November. I will do one more podcast in November, but then we will be into Vlogmas. So it's going to be a very, very filming heavy month in December. So I tend to pull back a little bit in November just to get myself ready for it which is super exciting obviously we've got the Maxine sweater release in November the Midland cardigan will be early January and there may be another release before then hopefully the Midland neck will be this year as well so there's loads there's loads coming from me at the moment uh Patreon is going really really nicely I just did a video over there where I basically destashed my knitwear collection I I faced it I looked at all 30 things that I was storing in my house and decided what to do with them all um so yeah feel free to go and check that out and yeah I think I'm just I feel like I've really found my balance and my swing when it comes to work at the moment, which is wonderful because that was the aim of this year is to find balance in my life. And I just feel like I'm really in the flow with work. I'm enjoying all my projects and I'm enjoying the amount of time that I've spent working. I look forward to it every day. I'm just, yeah, things are good. And I'm, oh, I just love sharing it all with you. So Thank you so much for joining me again. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. I will catch up with you guys again very, very soon here on YouTube with another podcast in a couple of weeks. In the meantime, feel free to join me on Instagram for regular updates. But otherwise, I'll see you so close, so close. Otherwise, I will see you next time. Thank you so much for joining me and see you later. Bye-bye.